Well, hello there, everybody. It's Zach with KT Outdoors, and I wanted to spend a little time this morning having a bit of a conversation about soil amendments. So if you want to know what I have to say about soil amendments, that's coming up next. key thing that we need to understand before we start talking about soil amendments is why we're even amending the soil okay we are trying to feed the soil which if you're new to this channel you might not know that that's what we do here at KT Outdoors we like to teach you how to grow all sorts of food by feeding the soil that ultimately feeds your body and your soul while saving your family money in the process so when we're looking at this whole notion of soil amendments, we wanna make sure that we understand right off the bat that it is not about feeding plants, okay? We don't feed plants with soil amendments. What we're feeding is the soil. If you wanna feed plants, then you use fertilizer, okay? Now you can read all sorts of stuff on the internet about why fertilizers are bad and petroleum-based fertilizers and all of that kind of stuff. But really what I want you to know, especially if you're a new gardener, is that there are two main ways to think about this whole fertility for your plants. And that is simply this. Fertilizer feeds plants. Organic fertilizers, biological ingredients and things like that feed the soil life that ultimately feeds your plants through their just natural you know life cycle processes or whatever so when we're talking about soil amendments i'm not talking about fertilizers i'm talking about things that will provide the soil microbiome with everything that it needs to be successful and thrive and reproduce and do all the things that we want it to do so that it can build healthy soil structure this line. here we go soil food web Okay, we all know the basics of a food web if you can remember back to a science class. Energy comes from the sun, it goes to the plants, and then the plants generally would feed organisms up here above the surface. So common food webs will have things like mice or deer or something like that consuming the grass. And then we start to get into the whole predator and prey and herbivores and carnivores and all of that, and we build the typical food webs of an ecosystem. What most people don't realize though is that that exact same dance is going on under the soil and in populations that are so massive it's difficult to wrap your head around because literally in a tablespoon of soil there can be billions of tiny little microscopic organisms all living their life cycles out okay so how does this work well plants with the energy that they got for the sun are kind of the key for it all. Now it's important to remember that the direction of the arrows in a food web indicate which way the energy is flowing. So what we see right off the bat is that this one plant has three potential outflows of energy because this is pointing back to this plant. So the first outflow, if we start at the top, is this outflow from the plant to this nematode that is a root feeding nematode. So of the hundreds and hundreds of varieties of root feeding nematodes, many of which are, you know, designed for specific plants or whatever, have a specific relationship with certain types of plants or certain plant families, those roots are feeding the nematodes. Likewise, that plant is feeding the fungus and the death of that plant will produce organic matter which in turn feeds the bacteria and other potential types of fungus that are helping to decompose that plant matter. Now, this is the only line in this whole thing that is pointing in both directions, which is an important illustration of the symbiosis that exists between fungus and plants. Okay, fungus by itself cannot produce really anything. It breaks things down. That is the role of fungus in 
an ecosystem. It's a decomposer. What we don't realize, though, is that in order to do that decomposition, the fungus also needs to have some sugar. It needs some energy. It needs some carbon inputs. And so what it does is it forms a symbiotic relationship with the plants where the fungus basically attaches its little hyphae to the roots of the plants so that it can get carbon and sugar and the elements that the plant is producing in abundance. It can take some of that from the plant in exchange for things that the plant cannot get itself. So essentially the fungus says, hey, I'm here for some sugar. What is it that you need? And the plant says, oh, I need some magnesium or I need some iron or I need this or that element to really help me be strong. And the fungus says, sweet, I want you to be strong because you keep giving me sugar. So let me go get you what you need. And then the fungus goes out into the soil and mines the elements and the minerals that will help that plant thrive so that it can produce more sugar for the fungus. It's a symbiotic relationship. They're both benefiting from that exchange. And that's why this very important line is going both directions. Okay, now all of those second trophic level producers are getting their energy either directly from the living plant or from the waste material, the organic material that is coming from the plant. So either roots dying off to the natural cycles of the plant or you know, the above ground plant matter itself dying off and being worked into the soil and broken down and decomposed by those bacteria and other things. Now, it's important to note before we move on, it's not organic matter just from plants. There is also residues and metabolites and waste that come from animals and that come from the microbes themselves that we're looking at. So it's not just the plants that are feeding the bacteria and the fungus. It is also the animals and the microbes themselves. Okay. All of that in turn feeds third trophic level consumers. So we have the nematodes that are feeding on the fungus and the bacteria themselves. We have the arthropods that are feeding on pretty much everything. The nematodes, the fungi, and the bacteria, they're just in there trash and everything. And you've got some protozoa that are taking in those bacteria doing what they need to that to do to them to maintain their life cycles and putting out a waste product in the end. So everything is this same exact life and death cycle that we see above the surface of the soil happening underneath it. And ultimately, we find that that feeds into higher level consumers such as birds and animals who will live out their life cycles in the process they will poop, they will raise their young, they will do their thing, they will live and they will die. And when they die, their bodies will break down and become waste residues that go back into the soil food web and feed the soil. So it's important to understand that when we are talking about using organic fertilizers, and I, I, I hesitate to use the word fertilizer, I like the word soil amendments better, when we're using these organic soil amendments, what we are doing is increasing this input right here. We're increasing the amount of organic matter that is available in our soils to feed these three things right here, which will in turn result in a population explosion because they will thrive in an environment that is loaded with food and in turn, everything above them, you know, the third level, the fourth level, and the fifth level, there will be this direct response of population growth and increased biodiversity and life in our soils because we are adding the organic material that the second trophic level animals are feeding on, and then they in turn are feeding the rest of the system. Okay, so when you add in things that are of an organic nature, you are not necessarily feeding the plants because notice this organic matter is not feeding the plants. It's not feeding them. There's no arrow from this organic matter that's going back to the plants. Okay. What it's doing is feeding all of this stuff 
and in the process breaking down and freeing up various elements and nutrients and things that either the fungi can go and mine and take back to the plants or that the plants themselves can absorb as one of the natural byproducts of all of this life that's in our soil. All right, thanks for watching so far. In the interest of keeping these videos short, I'm going to turn this into a series. So please stay tuned for episode two, where we'll begin looking at some of the specific organic amendments that I recommend adding to create some truly epic and healthy soil. Thanks for watching. You know what you need to do. Get outside, because life's better when it's lived outdoors. We'll see you in the next installment of this series.